How's it going guys? It's your boy Trash the Trash Tunes Yosh and I bring you a game that finally, after so long, it's finally being released. Clive and Wrench, ladies and gentlemen. It has been several years in the making, several years in the testing, and it's finally here. The development of Clive and Range started in 2011 by Dinosaur Bites, which, in other words, it's a one-man show. Rob Was from the United Kingdom. Why did I say the United Kingdom? From England. From England is a lad and published by Numskull. Released now, February 24th, 2023 for PS4, PS5, Nintendo Switch and PC on Steam. Like I mentioned, mostly this is a one-man job with a few outsources, you know, the exception for music and voice acting, we'll go there in a minute, where Rob had to learn how to 3D model, code, level design, talk to people, probably the hardest skill to learn. And I personally did my fair share of help. So is this a, a, a BayZ review? Well, no, because I actually like the game. And if you've been a part of my community for the last couple of years, then you know that I've only shown love to this game and I've only been wanting it to succeed. Personally, I started helping with the testing live on Twitch, actually, back in 2018, after seeing an advertisement on Facebook. Out of all places. <laughs> And also, keep in mind, the Kickstarter has been going around since 2015. And back then it reached the total, let's talk in dollars, 2.7k dollars out of 30k that was the actual goal. Which means that a lot more sacrifice, blood and tears went into this to make it be a reality. And I speak for Rob when I say that the game has reached much farther than he, I, most of us that have been following from the beginning have ever imagined and it is fucking great to see it. So, for those of you new here, Clive & Wrench is a 3D collectathon platformer. You know, those ones that, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, pretty talented at. Clive & Wrench has 11 distinct levels with its own boss battles and varying difficulties. Some of these bosses are more of a gauntlet than a boss fight, but nonetheless, unique. You control the fantastic duo, Clive, the rabbit, Wrench, the monkey. Yes, monkey wrench. Yes, that is, that is the pun. Why? How can people never, with the help of Nancy, to stop the evil Dr. Dawkins from controlling and changing history? Using a fridge as your time machine. Yes, Rob is a fan of Doctor Who. Yeah, yes, yes. You know, British people. Doctor, yes, Doctor Who is great. Okay, I get it. Yeah, and unlike what it might look at first glance, Clive and Ranch is not a spiritual successor of anything. Or a copy, per se. Instead, Clive and Ranch is a, a fruit of imagination and a letter of love to the 3D platformers that a lot of us grew up playing with. Rob is about my age, I'm 32, almost 33 this year, and we pretty much played a lot of the same games while growing up. So it is pretty much a game made by a fan for fans. And with all this inspiration, it ended up creating something completely different. But at first glance, people often compare it with games that, of course, inspired it. Spyro the Dragon. Crash Bandicoot, Banjo-Kazooie, Medieval, Muppet Monster Adventure. Please play Muppet Monster Monster Adventure on the PS1. It, it is a fantastic game and I've learned it from Rob and I absolutely loved it and I played it as an adult. Please go play that game. Super Mario Sunshine. Often it is compared to games like this because, you know, it is two mascots in a platforming world collecting stuff and one of them is in a backpack. So it is very complicated for people to not immediately associate it, but Take my word, it is its own thing. A lot of these games tend to be pretty harsh on the difficulty, and Clive and Wrench is exactly the opposite. Clive and Wrench, in my opinion, is an easy game. Very, very, very nice to control, but an easy game overall, with a decent curve on the difficulty for platforming as you go further into the game. But as a game itself, it's pretty easy. As a seasoned platformer player myself, I found it pretty enjoyable to complete levels at 100% without having to backtrack anything, because from the start you get all the movesets you need. If you can't get somewhere at some place in specific at some time, then it's because you're not really figuring out how to do it. 
because there is nothing to unlock besides more levels and achievements. So in my opinion, it makes this the perfect game for a younger audience that is getting into platforming, but also a really good game for old farts like us that at the end of a work they just want to turn our brains off and collect shiny thing and jump around. It is what it is. I like it. And listen, there is swimming and I tried to convince Rob to take swimming out of the game, but he told me, you know, if we have to suffer, lad, then you then uh, they will suffer too lad and mate and with this said there won't be a water level but there is only swimming parts so it is what it is let's take it it did not put a water level in the game that's already pretty good on its own if nothing convinced you that there was a selling point then this has to be one also once again still talking about the controls as the last part I would like to mention that for people that are fans of Mario games, Mario Sunshine, Mario 64, the backflip and the crouch jump are in, so that should be pretty intuitive for you, as it was for me. When it comes to the game's dialogue, it's in the good old gibberish, the However, the text <coughs> has the option to be picked between English, simplified Chinese, French, traditional Chinese, Korean, Japanese, Dutch, Spanish, German, Brazilian Portuguese, and, 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 Portuguese from Portugal. Yes, you've heard it right, the game is translated fully in Portuguese from Portugal, my language, and that, <coughs> it was also uh, translated by me. So, uh, you're welcome. Please, if you do find typos, I I just had the 12th grade and I, I was really bad. If you find any typos, just ignore it, please. So, uh, yeah, once again, really good for a younger audience because you get to pick most of the languages that a kid would be able to read. And besides testing and translating, I also had the pleasure to help with a character, which I voiced and designed, Carmelama, a helpful friend that in exchange for a scroll that you find in each map will give you a hint on where to find one of the main key items, the ancient stones, that are hidden across the level. He has a bald spot and a beard. It's an insert character. Plus, you can also find in the physical editions a mini manual or a manual depending on the edition you get with illustrations of all the movesets drawn by me. Overall, the rest of the key art for the characters was made by Luigi Lucarelli, very talented. If you've been following me for long enough, you've heard me talk about him. And to tie everything up, the fantastic soundtrack from Wish with Wish with Wish W Y S H W O O D. I'm gonna call it Wishwood, I'm sorry. Studio, which makes the experience of exploring this world an absolute delight. It's an upbeat, fantastic type of music that is just lovely. If you're a fan of puns, and I believe at this point, you know, judging from Eric's and now judging from Rob, it is a requirement to be good at puns. But if you like puns, especially in English, I can talk for the other languages. I tried my best in the Portuguese, but you know, it's very hard to translate puns. You will want to stop now and then, especially in the level Bunny, I Shrump the Kids. Bunny, I Shrump the Bunny. Bunny, the one where you walk around in the house. You're seeing footage of it right now, okay? Especially in that level. And in a lot of other levels, you will want to go into first person mode on the controller, R3, and look around and read the amount of references, the amount of love to other games indie games or classical platformers that the game was inspired by or even just a certain pug in a bathroom that's not a pun that's just that's just my dog and every time you pick up an ancient stone one of the key items like i mentioned you collect ancient stones and stopwatches and you need them for different things when it comes to completionism but whenever you pick up a nation stone you also get greeted usually with a pun not always there's a lot of them and overall it's just a lot of creativity i can stay here and talk all day about the game but whatever i say it would always sound like i'm trying to pull this my own way i'm trying to make it sound better than it is but in all honesty and completely off script now yes there is a script here that i wrote so i wouldn't forget what to talk about but completely off script this is a game made by a fan for fans at a really affordable price i believe 35 bucks uh, on release physical editions might be like five or ten bucks more don't call me on that check it yourself and it's a real work of passion how many of us dreamed about making a game how many of us actually done it how many of us actually spent over 10 years of our life 
started in 2011. How many of us spent over 10 years of our life putting our blood and tears into this, into a project that we don't even know if it's going to do anything. We don't even know if it's going to succeed at all. And manage to have it on stores, on physical editions, out there for everybody to buy. And surviving a couple years of a certain lockdown. It is absolutely fantastic that Rob made it this far. And Rob, I know you're going to watch this video. Congratulations, mate. I am 100% here for you and I am 100% happy to see a dream coming true. And that's why I also wanted to help any way I could. Uh, that's why I keep pushing the game to everyone I know. Because I do believe in this project. Because I do believe in this in this game and it is a game that if as a kid I saw it and I have access to it I would absolutely fall in love with it and we are very quick to judge games we are very quick to judge performance and development issues and I'm no different however following up the development of Clive and Wrench did make me look at indie games or games overall in a very different light and to see that not just because you have an idea or not just because you think something might work you know it doesn't mean that it will work or it should be implemented there's a lot more about the game that I could talk about but I just want to see this succeed and if you want to help this project out links in the doobly-doo for Steam for physical editions, you can probably find on Amazon, on local stores in Portugal, I believe Mega Mania or Gaming Replay are selling it, but for other countries I can't really speak for it. I will receive soon, next week, my physical edition for Switch and I can't wait to jump into the game and honestly complete 100% everything, achievements and all. I, again, not gonna give it a score, but I invite you to come over on my Twitch channel and check it for yourself. Uh, if you can't catch me live, the VOD will be there and you'll be able to see it yourself, just like I have all of the streams or most of the streams that I made of the alpha builds back since 2018. Also, a big shout out to everyone that would join those streams and would give Rob feedback, things that actually were implemented because of feedback we gave, and that's absolutely amazing. If we want more games in the future to not be only farming simulators, then we have to sometimes, you know, support the people that are actually making things that we also love. If you like what you see in the footage, or if you like what you see around there on my Twitch channel or other people's channels, please judge it yourself and give it a shot if you can. Thank you for watching. I'll see you, I don't know when, but on the next one, stay tuned.